Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Pastor Herbert and I would like to greet you uh, in the name of Jesus through Emmanuel Christian Broadcasting Network. And, and this program is New Life in Jesus. So I would like to uh, greet you and bless you in the name of Jesus. How are you, my brothers and sisters in Christ? Uh, thank you so much uh, that I would like to thank God and uh, thank our, our Jesus Christ that he has chosen us to come and uh, preach to you, peop to you uh, all the people like, uh, who, have, uh, who have known Jesus. And um, maybe you are new to Christianity. But anyhow, Jesus loves to bless you. And we all bless you. And we all love you. Hallelujah. So I would like to start my message uh, through the book of Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 33. It says, Seek thy kingdom and righteousness first, and all these things will be given unto you. Seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. So I would like to ask you, I would like to put a question to you and ask uh, what is the meaning, what is the meaning of seek thy kingdom and righteousness first and all these things will be added unto you. What do you understand by this? So Jesus is saying, if you want, if you want anything in your life, but first you have to seek thy kingdom and righteousness. Jesus also said, uh, he said, uh, that the two greatest commandment is love your Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your spirit, with all your energy, with everything. Love the Lord thy God. And the second greatest commandment as follows, as um, um, he says, Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Love your neighbors. So this is the greatest commandment. And all the commandment is coming uh, uh, unto this. So that, that, is, that is the commandment, the greatest commandment that Jesus gave you. So now, let us come back to seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. What do we mean seek thy kingdom? Let me explain. Seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. You see, there is some principalities and there is some rules and regulation in kingdom of God. The meaning of kingdom is a country, a country ruled by a king. A country ruled by a king. So there is one king and there are citizens of the, of the country and the king is the ruler. And those days, when we see in, 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 in the book, in our, all the books in the Bible, when we see all the kings are the one who rules the country. Kings. So that is called kingdom. So when we say united kingdom, that means in united kingdom, in this land, in this country, there is king or queen ruled by them. So every kingdom... Every kingdom will have a king. So that is all that is said, uh, that, that is called kingdom. So seek thy kingdom and righteousness. That means heavenly kingdom is the kingdom ruled by one person, which is our God, which is our God who created the heaven and earth. So he is the ruler, he is the king, he is the authority. And he is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is everything. Our God. So we have to seek his kingdom and righteousness. So what is his kingdom? You see, in every government, in most of the, in, in, in this world, people have democracy. Democracy, if you know. What do you mean by democracy? Democracy is, is where in the parliament or in the in the in the government the people have the authority to say what they want hallelujah uh, ruled by the people ruled by the people so democracy is the voice of the people now kingdom is the voice of the king 
you know the differentiation. So I'm, I'm going to differentiate this. I'm going to differentiate this. So in the democracy, you can see there is prime minister and those prime minister and those prime minister will talk on behalf of the people. That means if you need anything, the people vote. Voting system is the democracy. Voting system. People have the power. People have the, have to, have, have the power to rule. That is why in United Kingdom, even though it's a kingdom, but there are some 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 diff some some kind of a difference in the in the in the government system, where there is prime minister, but the but the but the king or queen doesn't rules anymore. They are just being there because of generation to generation. But even United Kingdom, it's not a, a kingdom uh, prince. They, they never fully follow the kingdom principle, but they follow a democratic. Uh, principle. So when, when it comes to democratic, people have the voice. That is why in England you can see House of Common and House of the Lords. So House of the Common, that means the people have the authority to say something. That is where a biggest problem coming in. Because all the constitution of heaven, kingdom, kingdom rules and regulation is this Bible. Because God says, seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. Seek thy kingdom and righteousness. That means God is the kingdom and he have passed the rules and regulation. And Jesus says, not one of the word or one of the comma or one of the dot from this book shall be removed. Because this is the law of God. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. So that is why Jesus says, seek thy kingdom and righteousness. The king have to rule. The king have the all, every authority. The people don't have any say at all. Any says, nothing. But mostly that we see right now, we see in, in, uh, in, in people and in government, in now new generation, there are a lot of democratic going on. Democratic system... It is not from the biblical at all. It is the kingdom system from the biblical. So, now, Jesus says, Jesus says, you are the ambassador. You are the servant of the kingdom of God. You are the servant. So, when you are the servant of the kingdom of God, seek thy kingdom and righteousness. That's mean. That means you have to seek him. Then you become the servant of the kingdom of God. That means you are working under the palace of God, under the kingdom of God. So people who have born again, they are automatically go into the kingdom of God and not into the democratic world of now nowadays. So if you are under the kingdom of God, that means you are a servant of God. So I tell you something, an ambassador or a or a senator, or, or anybody who works under the government, they say a government servant. Uh, do you know that? They say a government servant, because they are under the government. So now, under the kingdom system, you are, a, you are a servant, and I am a servant of God. And I've been chosen by God, and we believe Jesus, and we have born again, and we are under the kingdom of heaven. Under the kingdom of heaven. We are seeking the kingdom and righteousness first. And all these things will be added unto you. So we are seeking God. When we are seeking God, we are automatically become the citizenship of God. We belong to God. Hallelujah. We belong to God. So now, when we are belong to God, you know something? There is two different things that I've heard from a very big preacher I was preaching. He was telling an ambassador of a country. And a normal person. If I go and slap a normal person, the police come. The, by law, it is assault. I will be recorded and I will be, uh, people will tell me, you are under the category of assault, assaulting people. I slap somebody. But if you slap an ambassador, you know what it will be? It will be International Security Act. That means the government will come and catch you because you are the ambassador. But Jesus said you are an ambassador. So now, if you seek the kingdom and righteousness, nobody can touch you because you are an ambassador of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So if somebody try to attack you, the heaven's kingdom will come and take a case upon the person who come and take action on you. You know what I mean? So, we are all a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. So in, in like in, in you see in, in Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 to 18 we can see uh, the centurion the centurion when the centurion come to Jesus he said Jesus my one of my servant man of my servant is sick can you please and Jesus says I'm coming to your place he said no Jesus I am under a big authority when I say to one, go and it will go. When I say to another one, he will come. So you are a king, you are the person, you are the king and you have a kingdom and you are right, uh, you have a big kingdom up there. When you say a word, definitely it will be done. That is the reason Jesus say, I have never seen such a man of great faith like him in this Israel. Never. You know why? Because that man is using the kingdom authority. So, when the king have something, when the king have a rules, we have to follow. So that is the reason God says, seek thy kingdom and righteousness. You have to follow his kingdom and righteousness law. You have to follow. From the book of Genesis to the Revelation, everything Everything that is why Jesus says in chapter 5 of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. I'm going to read for you. Do not think that I came to destroy the law and prophets. Never. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law and prophets. Never. It says, And I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What do you mean by fulfill? But to fulfill the law and prophets. You see, the five first book, Ex, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These five books is Pentateuch. Pentateuch. Yeah? These five books is the history. What happened in the formation of world and what took place in the five books of history. And from the five books up to Malachi... The whole Old Testament is the prophets. So what Jesus says, I never come to destroy the law and prophets. That means, I never come to destroy the Old Testament. But now, what is the big problem is, people are saying the Old Testament is just for a reference. There is nothing to do with Old Testament. We are under New Testament. We are under grace. And we are not under law. But grace and law are working together. Grace and law are working together. I tell you how. For example, in Matthew chapter 4, when, when, when Jesus was tempted by the Satan, the Satan says, Jesus, the word says, the Lord God will send angels charge over you to come and hold you and not let your foot to dash on the stone. So jump, Jesus, jump. Jump, please jump. And Jesus also said, that is very true, Satan. What you say, it's very true, 100% true. Very true. But another word, the law. God says, there was another word, do not test your father God. Do not test your God. Thy Lord, thy God. Don't test him. God says, don't test him. Don't test God. The, the, the word says. So the word, the Bible, the word, it is the law. So Jesus there showed not only, you, you cannot test the Lord, but Jesus showed in a very good way to the Satan, no. It is, it is also says this. You cannot follow only one way. You, only, you need to follow two ways. Hallelujah. In this Bible, there is Old Testament, New Testament. So you cannot only follow New Testament and leaving all the Old Testament. Never. You need to see our forefathers. Abraham, Jacob, Shatrach, Meshach, Abiknego, Daniel and all those people how they have gone through. I How they have gone with, through with God. We have to see them. 
We have to learn from them. That is why the Old Testament was there. That is why Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law or prophets. Uh, earlier, earlier to me, there was another brother who was preaching uh, in this same ECBN. Uh, he, was, he, was, he was preaching, he was telling that nowadays people are choose and pick. You know, when you go to market, when you go to market, you can pick and choose. You know that? You can pick and choose. Now in Tesco's and in, in some shopping malls, you say, buy two, you will get one free. Or you can pick and choose. You know, I used to buy juice, um, juice and then fresh orange, fresh juice. And there are a few bottles and there is a company called uh, uh, Innocent and a beautiful, nice drinks. And you, you, there are different varieties type of juice, fresh juice, fresh juice. When you pick one, you will get one half price. So they can, they say, they say you can choose anything from this shelf. And if you choose two, get one free. So you can pick and choose. But the Bible, this constitution, this law, this constitution from the kingdom of heaven cannot be pick and choose. No, you have to be balanced of everything. You need to be balanced of everything. Hallelujah. So that is why the kingdom of heaven is ruled by one person. There is no two person, three person, four person, never. Kingdom is ruled by the king alone. The king Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, our God Jehovah, our Lord, our God who rules the earth and the, the universe. He is the only word that is the word of God. That is why in Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12, it says very clearly, the word is living and powerful. Living and powerful. And it is more sharper than the two double edged it's, it's double edged sword. It can even, even pierce through the, through the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrows. It is the discerner of your thoughts. And intents of your heart. The word of God. It's so powerful. Very powerful. That we cannot take into granted. Never. Never. So. Jesus came to this earth. Not to destroy the law or prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. As, as For as shortly I say to you. Till heaven and earth pass away. One jot or one title will by no means pass from the law. For breaks one, whoever breaks, whoever there, therefore breaks one of the least of this commandment and teaches men show, so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teach, teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. When we read the Bible, read carefully. There, there might be like a two examples that I can give. Two men. Let's say, let's take a two people. One person are very clever and he can memorize things. He read the Bible and he memorizes. And if you ask to quote certain verses, he can quote immediately. That one, he's using his, the, the gift of God, which is, which is the memory power. That is good. But the man who read the Bible, memorize it with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, does more greater things than the man who only memorize it. So there is two difference. So you can memorize. You can memorize. But, but there is no effect. But if you ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand the word of God genuinely, and seeking his kingdom and righteousness, God will deliver you, my brother. God will have compassion on you. God will love you. God will show more greater things. That is why in Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, it says, Call unto me and I will answer you. Show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There are a lot of things that you do not know. I do not know. And there are a lot of people we do not know. I learn, I learn. I used to see messages. I've learned, I'm learning and getting, trying to get myself to go more closer to God. So that is how my brothers and sisters, you need to go more closer to God. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. So, seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. Seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. And another thing that I wanted to tell you. Uh, it, is, it is in Matthew chapter 17. It's trans, transfiguration. Jesus' transfiguration on the mount. Now, I'm going to read for you. Now, after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, John and his brother, brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking, talking with them. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I, I, I am well pleased. Hear him, and when, when the disciples hear it, they fell on their face, and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. You know what is the meaning of transfiguration? Transfiguration is exactly what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, he says, I do not come to destroy the law and prophets. Now, listen here carefully, my brothers and sisters. The law and the prophets, like earlier I said, the five first book was written by Moses. By written by Moses. So who appeared in transfiguration? Moses appeared there. Yeah. And the rest of the book in the Old Testament is all the prophets. And the greatest prophet is Elijah. We can see one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament is Elijah. Yes, so Elijah appeared in the transfiguration. So the first law was created, was, was given, the law was given to Moses. So Moses appeared over there and the rest of the book in the Old Testament, Elijah was a great prophet, prophet was there. Moses, the lawgiver was there. The great prophet Elijah was there. So who appeared in the transfiguration? Moses and Elijah. You can see the difference? So when Moses and Elijah and what Jesus was doing, these three people was there. Moses and Elijah. That is why Jesus said, I came not, I came to, I do not come. I do, I do, do not think that I came to destroy the law or prophets. I did not come to destroy by fulfill. The transfiguration is the fulfillment upon Jesus. So what Jesus did, they were talking. Uh, let's, let's see again in chapter 17. They were, they, were, they, were, they were talking about the things to come. That means God taking the authority, Jesus is taking whatever the law and the prophet says to come and fulfill. He is getting the authorization and he is getting the fulfillment in that configuration. You see, Jesus would have done that by alone, but he never do. He took three people with them. He took three people with them and let them to see what happened over there. Because he wants that thing to be recorded in this constitution of the kingdom of God, which is the Bible. Hallelujah. So now... Can you change when Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, not even one title or one jot can be removed. Now, if you think that Christianity is like a democracy that Christians can voice out, that means we can change the law. That is what democracy is. We can call upon, we can call upon uh, about, uh, about five or six bishops, the main Canterbury bishops and all the bishops. And all the bishops, we can join together. We can join together, sit down and talk to change the law. But Jesus said, nobody can change the law because this is the kingdom of God. Kingdom authority. So now, Jesus says, seek thy kingdom and righteousness. What do you need to seek? Seek the constitution of our Lord Jesus Christ. Seek the constitution of the kingdom of heaven. This is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. We are a kingdom people, not a 
not a democratic people. So, in church, we need to use the kingdom principle. That means, voice of God first. So, every pastor need to hear, sit down and hear the voice of God. What is the vision that God gave to the church? Because Jesus loves so much the church. So, now, we need to change our life to be a, a citizenship of the kingdom of God. So that is why we need to seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The whole book from Genesis to, to Revelation, it's about righteousness. So my brothers and sisters, let us seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. When you always ask God, Jesus, I wanted to follow your righteousness. I wanted to let your blood to come and cover me, to, be, to walk in righteousness and seek your Seek your kingdom, read the Bible, pray, and, and, and seek His righteousness. That is more important. Once you have achieved this, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, call to me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things. God is going to use you to create more new things to come in future. Hallelujah. You know why? Because we are not opening our mind to the kingdom of God. Some people are, are opening very little and they are grasping the ideas of God into their life. And they are coming up. So we must not be like that. We must always open our mind to God towards the kingdom of heaven so that God can use you to do mighty things. I tell you my brothers and sisters, I bet you, if you open your mind towards God, God is going to show you great and mighty things to, to create something new in this. Do you know something? If you create something new, you are a millionaire. You know that? You are a billionaire. You look at apples. apples. People create mobile phones. There was not a mobile phone. Somebody have got the idea to create a mobile phone. And mobile phone companies are very big, huge market in this whole world. Look, look at uh, Oliver and Wilbur, Wright's com Wright brothers, who created aeroplane. God have given them the, the idea because the, the father of uh, Wright brothers are bishop. So they always pray together. They always seek thy kingdom and righteousness first. That is why these people can get a good ideas from the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, I tell you, this is the law of God. Just follow, just seek his kingdom and righteousness and God will bless you. I pray that God will bless you. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Let us close our eyes. So Father God, we praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you so much, oh Father God, that we have learned about the kingdom of yours, oh Father. Seek thy kingdom and righteousness. Let us leave everything and let us seek your kingdom and righteousness so that you can use us for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, in the precious blood of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen.